with us today. And let's go ahead and review today's agenda. We're going to start with a new solicitation system, uh, talking about it, what it means, what is it, and how does that affect you as a supplier or an offerer. Our new supplier portal, what is that? How do I view solicitation opportunities? And what is the difference between an offer versus a supplier? Uh, getting a user ID request and the purpose of that. We'll review the offer registration and also how to sign in to respond to a solicitation. And when you receive notifications, when do you receive them? We'll also review um, just how you can review or how you can access training needs, things that will help you, and then what our next steps are. So let's go ahead and just let me do an overview for you. The University of South Carolina is implementing a new online bidding system. Uh, this new web-based software system will be used by the purchasing department to create online solicitation events. You can ex and we'll be able to accept electronic bids and proposals and issue notice of awards for procurement contracts resulting from the solicitations. And I did want to mention, I think I forgot to say, but we are recording this, or we will be recording this so that you can have access to this on our purchasing web page. All right. What does this mean for the supplier offer? Having this new solicitation system uh, will allow you public access to a PeopleSoft presentation of the University of South Carolina's goods and services and construction solicitations. We do use PeopleSoft as our financial system and it does allow us to do the online bidding as well. So you can also have an electronic offer registration in this uh, PeopleSoft system for new suppliers. And it provides an electronic creation and submission of responses to any solicitations by offers and any existing University of South Carolina suppliers. The new system will replace our current legacy method of posting solicitations onto the purchasing department's webpage and accepting bids and proposals by postal mail or email. The ability to submit offers directly online will create a much more efficient relationship between the buyer and the offerer. So this is just kind of a quick view of our, our, our web page, and this will be posted on Monday. You'll be able to see this. And um, if you go to our main purchasing homepage at purchasing.sc.edu, you will see the solicitations and awards link in the left menu. So we have that highlighted up here. And you'll see the introduction to our new system and the new URL for the supplier portal, which is highlighted in this burgundy color here. Our plan is to have this active the middle of March. So this will be on our home web page. All right, so our new solicitation public portal. Offers and suppliers will use that URL that we I just pointed to on our purchasing page. That will be available um, to you, and you'll once you kind of link into that and click into it, it'll bring you to this supplier homepage. It's a public access point, and this will be active on March 1st uh, going forward and will be maintained in this new system. On this supplier homepage, you'll be able to view more information about suppliers and offers registrations, including instructional resources and frequently asked questions and answers. These different pictures that you see here, each of these are called tiles. So you may hear me use that word a tile during the presentation. So the first tile that we're going to click is the solicitation opportunities. As a public view, anybody can come here and using that URL for the suppliers, you'd click on the solicitation opportunities and then you'll see a row, a rows of solicitations that are available. Now this is in a test mode right now, so these are not currently out there, just so you know, because we're not live. So these different rows are there, and in order to view a particular row, um, I apologize, You, there is a particular filter here. So I mentioned earlier that we'll have goods and services and construction. So you'd click on the filter, it's right here, and I was reminded it looks just like an oil filter. And then if you'll click the magnifying glass, which is a lookup, if you'll click that on, you'll see drop downs of our different solicitation methods. 
And you can, in this example, we're going to click goods and services. And when we do, it filters to all the goods and services solicitations. And this is the um, event details page that you can, you know, view that. Once you do click that row, then you can come here. It'll open this page, the event details, and you can view solicitation package by clicking on the words that are highlighted. And it will take you into the, the Word document of the solicitation and um, be able to view that. We'll go into the solicitation and downloading all that in a little bit. But I just wanted to kind of give you a little overview of the uh, solicitation uh, portal. So let's just do a little demo of that and so you can have an understanding of how it works. So. I have gone into the URL that I mentioned, and here are my tiles. So your tiles would look just like this. We have a welcome tile that says welcome guest, but we wanna look at solicitation opportunities. So I click on that and I have a list. There are 35 rows and it's in the far right hand corner, but I wanna filter and I wanna look at just goods and services. So I'm gonna click the filter and I'm going to go to the method. Sorry, I meant um, <laughs> not the method, the classification. And then I'm going to click goods and services. And once I've clicked that, it populates the GS. I'll click done. And now I have 27 rows instead of the 35. So that meant the others were probably all construction. And then these are the remaining ones that are goods and services. All right, so what are, um, what are the differences between an offer and a supplier? So the offer is somebody who has not done business really at the University of South Carolina. You'll need to, if you would like to submit an offer to a solicitation, you will need to register as an offer in this new system. And then you'll receive a user ID you'll be required to create a password. You'll need to remember that password. You're gonna hear me say that a couple of times today. So you have to remember the password. This is your own password. The, you'll use the user ID and password to enter the secure supplier portal to respond to a solicitation. And that secure supplier portal means it's a dedicated page to you. And if you're awarded a solicitation, then you'll become a U of SC supplier. Now, for current suppliers that are currently have done business with the university in the last year and a half or two years, you probably already have your supplier ID, but you may not have uh, received a um, user ID for the new portal. If you've not been into the new portal, it went live back in July of 2020. So if you've not been into the new portal, you also will need to register um, and get a an ID. So let's look at that. Um, just for a second, I'll show you. We click on the tile for user re registration. So this is for those who are currently a University of uh, South Carolina supplier. So you've signed into, you've never signed into the supplier portals. You'll need that user ID. Once you've clicked on the tile, then you'll click the register now. When you click register now, this window will open. And there are several boxes or fields that you'll need to complete. So use this um, area so that you can receive your new user ID. You will need to have your supplier ID and your tax ID numbers in order to create the user account. You'll select, um, in this case, I'm using the domestic supplier, but if you are an international supplier, you would select that tile or that selection. If for any reason you cannot remember your supplier ID, because that's the first thing that you have to have, please email our purchasing at South Carolina or sc.edu mailbox, and we'll be happy to provide that for you. All right, I'm going to step you through that just a little bit. So let's do that. And we're going to use the example of a domestic supplier. So click on the user registration tile. And you'll see that there are several options here and we want to go to user ID request domestic and we're going to register now. 
You'll type in your supplier ID, your tax ID. You'll click Add. Then you'll enter a unique password to you and confirm that password. Then you'll enter your name and last name, first name and last name, and what your email address is. You'll notice the asterisk here. It does require the email address. And the reason why is we need to send you the user ID. So we definitely have to have the password so that we can communicate with you. And then once you've completed those areas, then we'll ask that you select the uh, terms and conditions and agree to those and click the submit button. And we will rec you'll receive an email with your user ID. So you will receive a notification. Now, if for some reason you haven't received, it's possible that maybe you entered your email address incorrectly. So we wanna make sure that we can help you. And again, you can always uh, email us at the purchasing.sc.edu mailbox. All right, that's for current suppliers. Now, what if you've never done business with USC? We ask that you register as an offerer. You have seen a solicitation, you're interested in it, you wanna put an offer in, now what do I do? I need to have an ID. So we would click on the same box, user registration. But in this case, you're gonna register as a new offer and you'll click register now. So when you become, when you submit that, you're gonna have six steps that you're gonna walk through so that we can have more information on your company because you've never done business with us or you have never been into this, um, or in the last, whatever, 10 years maybe. So our, our financial system is about five and a half years old. So if you haven't done business with us in a while, you would definitely need to do this. So you will be greeted with a welcome. And then you'll be asked also to enter your tax ID and company name. And if applicable, provide any government classifications and additional reporting elements. You'll enter your business address, such as your primary, and potentially you'll enter an order address for, um, you know, if your purchase orders need to go to a different address, you, you would enter a second address. For the contacts, you'll select one contact for this account, just one. And be sure to make note of that password. <laughs> Don't forget the password. And your user ID, which all the user IDs begin with SCS, and then there will be numbers that follow that. You'll want to review the terms and conditions and um, submit the registration information. You'll receive an email containing the new user ID and the steps for how to log in. All right, I would like to walk you through this. This does have, like I said, six steps. So you'll help me um, by listening and I'm gonna create a new uh, offer or registration. So I'm gonna register now. And I'm in a business. So it says I'm welcomed right here. It also allows me to, let's see if I can blow that up just a little more for you. So it will allow you to email us in case you're stuck at the very first step. Um, but I'm gonna be a reg registering as a business. I'm gonna click the next button. So I'm now on step two, identifying information. So I need to list my tax ID. I'm gonna list my company name. And I don't have a continuing name. If I had a government classification, I could use this magnifying glass and then I can select one of these. So we'll, um, you can do that. In this example, I do not have one, So, but I am a woman owned business. So I'm gonna check that. The ethnicity, I can also look here and select any of these if I choose to participate in that, and I will. I will select that Caucasian and women owned. And I'll click the next button. And now I need to put my address. So y'all have my um, business address here. This is where purchasing is. And I can skip these fields or I can fill them all in, but if I just populate my zip code and tab, it will populate the city, county, and state. But it will not give me my email address. I have to type that in myself. So I now have entered my company address, my 
um, email address. If I had additional addresses, such as the order address, I can add that as well. I'm ready to go to my next step, and that is entering the contact. Who is my primary contact? And in this example, we'll pick on myself, Lana Widener, and of course, I'm the president of Smith & Company. And I'm just going to use my same email address, but it possibly could be a different one in your case. And when you come to the contact type, um, if you'll type in general or select general. And here I need to enter a password. Now the test is if I can enter it twice without any mistakes. Okay, so we are now on step four. And if you'll notice right here in the middle of the page, which I love, I now have my user ID. So I'm going to save that. And just for purposes of, I am going to write down the number. Even though when I'm done, I will receive an email with that user ID. Okay, everything looks good on this page. I'm the authorized person, I have my user ID, my phone number is correct, and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Categorizations. You're gonna select the um, categories that best describe the products and our services that you provide. This is not our complete list, but we wanted to use this as an example. So, I provide HVAC equipment, and I also can install my HVAC equipment. I can do both. I'm not, um, I can do those. I also have some HVAC supplies. So as you notice, as I clicked each box, it now populates that I have three categories. What is the purpose of this? Well, in these three categories, if I should receive, um, or if the purchasing department buyer has a solicitation they are putting out to the public, then they can select these areas of categories and as long as we have your valid email address, you'll be notified of a solicitation opportunity for any HVAC equipment, HVAC installation, or HVAC supplies. And we'll have this list uh, a lot more detailed for uh, Monday when we go live, so those of you who want to start registering as offers will be able to select those categories. I love this part because I think it will be very helpful to you um, to notify you of upcoming business that we are putting out on the street for you. So everything looks good. I have three categories I've selected. I'm ready to go to the next page. So this is my last step, submit six of six. Select the review button to review the registration information. So if I do that, it will just um, show me my company name and it'll provide if I had any uh, classification certifications. It has my ID, my tax ID number. It does say that I'm Caucasian, woman owned, and it shows my categories. It provides my main address. I can review that to make sure I typed it correctly. It has my name. Again, it has my user ID and it has my telephone number. And everything looks correct, so I'm ready to return. And the last step on this page is to review the terms and conditions and select that I have reviewed them. So we're going to say that I reviewed them for purposes of our demonstration. And then I will submit. So I've successfully registered an email regarding the registration set. Any email regarding the registration status will be sent to LLW at mailbox.sc.edu. That's registering for those who are not currently University of uh, South Carolina suppliers. All right, so now I'm ready to sign in to a solicitation and um, I've received my email that provided my user ID. I remembered my password. So I'm ready to go now to the sign in tile. When I click that on, it's going to ask me for that SCS number. 
And so you'll type in SCS and whatever number they provided for you and the password that you've remembered. And then when you do that, when you enter it, you will then see on the welcome tile your name. In this example, Ed Levine is now signed in to review his dedicated page. And if he received any invitations, it will show that as well in the solicitation opportunities. So solicitation opportunities. I'm ready to go in. I want to put in an offer. I'm ready to review it. So let's click on the tile solicitation opportunities. And here we are. So public events. This automatically defaults when you come into the system to all public events that are listed, which means all solicitations that are out, made out to the public. We've highlighted this particular one because that's the one we're going to look today. Or we're going to look at today. There is also invited events. This is uh, events where you received an email notification about a solicitation or it also will populate in this list, in this row of solicitations, any that you've accepted or where you've created an offer. So to respond to any event, just click that event line and it will take you to the solicitation details page. Just as an overview on the page, um, also you'll see to the left, uh, there are several areas. So we have all, this provides us how many solicitations are public events that are active, including your invited events. So in this example, you see 32, and there are 25 rows showing to the far right, but if I clicked invited events, there would be seven. So for a total of 32. New are the new events that are you've not taken any action on. Accepted, if you've accepted an invitation declaring you want to participate, you'll be notified of, of an event activity. Declined is if you've declined an invitation, you'll, you will be notified here. So in this example, there's one that has been declined. And if you decide after submitting a bid to withdraw that before the deadline, this would indicate that you've withdrawn a bid. In this case, there is no bid withdrawn. You'll also notice that we have start and end date column, and that determines what's available to be viewed. You can see in the ends in column, I have four days, five days before a solicitation um, will end or close. All right, now I've clicked on the row. I'm ready to view the solicitation package. So this is important. When you view the solicitation package, it downloads the document. And we ask that you print that solicitation document. Complete it, respond, it, respond to it, sign it. You're going to scan it back in as a completed package, and you're going to save it to your desktop. That's important because the next step is to create your offer. So when you create your offer, and you're going to click that button, you will have multiple questions. Potentially, it, you'll always have one. The first question is, um, it says answer solicitation qu questions. Click the enter file attach response. When you click that, you'll um, be able to upload your solicitation response or your offer. Step two in this example is to enter an offer price. So there is a field that you would enter an appropriate offer. And you would do that if there were multiple lines, you could do it for all lines that are there. Once you have uploaded your offer and you've completed those offer price fields, if there's one, you complete one. If there's 10, you complete 10. Then you'll click your submit offer. So let's go in and do that. Um, I'd like to use that for you. So let me pull this over. And we're going to sign in. So let's see if I can do my sign in correctly. This is the real test. All right. So I've been on a kick of watching Extreme Makeover, so I apologize, but I am now Extreme Makeover and I am Ty Pennington in this example. 
So I would like to see what my solicitation opportunities are. So I've been welcomed and now I'm going to the solicitation opportunities. It does take a minute. I don't know if you can see the blue wheel spinning, but there was a little blue wheel spinning. All right, so there are 35 rows and I'm on the public events page, if you will, and I can see all 35. I can check to see if I was invited to any. Nope, sadly, I did not get invited, but I do have an opportunity to definitely go in here and review all the solicitations. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and see what these are about. And there is one I'm gonna choose. We're gonna look at the waste water services. It's an IFB example. So let's select that one. Again, it takes just a moment to open. All right, here I am, solicitation event information. The solicitation name is the wastewater services. It's an IFB example. I have a solicitation ID, 210103. So that's the number that has been assigned to this particular event. The classification is goods and services. The buyer in this example is Kristen Moss. Again, we give the description and it is uh, wastewater services, IFB. I'm ready to review that solicitation package. So I'm going to download that. It is in a PDF. And now I can see, and let me blow that up a little bit so you can too. Um, it is solicitation number, date issued February 19th, Kristen Moss. And by the way, that's not really her phone number. Um, this is only an example. I had the URL I mentioned earlier, so we will want you to come in and upload to this should you save for later and need to come back. So we have the different pages, um, you know, page two providing, so this may look familiar to you if you've done recent offers to this uh, University of South Carolina. This is should be the same looking basic uh, document that you've seen before. So you'll download that. Once you've, once you've downloaded it, you've completed it, you're ready to create your offer and submit your offer. You'll click the Create Offer button. And you'll scroll down. Step one, answer solicitation questions. In the question it says, or in the comment, attach your completed solicitation package here. Attaching the document is required before your offer can be submitted. So we're gonna enter a file attachment response. And in the middle here, it says attached file. Well, I haven't done that yet, so let's upload my response. I'm gonna choose the file and we'll just pick a quote. I will upload that. All these take just a minute because we're pulling from outside, bringing it into the system. We're gonna hope I don't get stuck in the middle of this lovely upload. You know, it's because I'm showing you in a demonstration, right, that it's taking longer than it should. See if I can. All right, it is hanging up on me, so I'm gonna see if I can close this and
I know our test, this is all in our test environment, and I know that it's been a little bit slow, so I apologize that it's taking a little longer today. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Well, I was going to try to kill it and see if I can do that again for you. Um, when we go live, it should work for you. It has um, stopped. So we're going to say that it uploaded the document for you. You're not going to have any problems. I didn't have any problems when I tested it earlier. So we'll just say OK. At this point, um, it is going to come back and ask me to upload, and I will try again. But um, I also need to enter the water services price, and that would come also from the solicitation document that you had. So um, we have a quantity of one each, and my services response that now this is and I want to show you when I uh, submit that number it also populates my line pricing here $1,000 and it has it here as the line amount so each time if there are multiple lines each line would be calculated to the right on the line and then your total pricing would be the cumulative of all the lines it's going to ask me if I reviewed this solicitation document I'm going to say yes I have reviewed it if I submit the offer in this particular case, I'm just going to review while it's doing uh, its thinking. It's asked me to correct something. So I wanted to show this to you because I did not have that attachment. It says, please enter a response for solicitation question one. So I am required to come in and add the attachment. So enter the attached file and bear with me. I'm gonna try one more time. We're gonna pick something maybe just a little smaller. I'll do a purchase order. <laughs> So we'll try the purchase order and hopefully that will much much quicker so smaller document and I'll just put um, solicitation response I submit oh I can't spell I tie by extreme you don't even have to put all this but I just wanted to put a little something so my response and I'm gonna say okay now, I'm going to, one more time, since I did have an error not having that attached, now I'm ready to submit my offer. And it's there. So it says your offer has been successfully submitted to return, click home at the top of the right. And a lovely part of this program, you'll receive an email notifying you that your offer has been received. So I'm gonna go home, let's go home here. And now I'm back at my supplier portal page. I can come into solicitation opportunities. And I just wanted to show you this one step. Now I only have 34 rows visible, but if I go to invited events, I have a response and my bid has been accepted. Isn't that easy? This is so user friendly. I love this part. And I love knowing that we have these two different um, tabs, if you will, for public events and invited events. Hopefully that helps you and looking at these tiles over and over with me. All right, let's just review a few more things today. Um, we do have some training resources that we are going to provide on our purchasing web page. We encourage you and are excited for you to use this new system. We're thrilled. I can't even tell you how thrilled we are to be able to go online and have an online bidding system. So what's coming up? Our next steps. The offer registration is going to be available Monday, March 1st. 
you'll need to visit the web web page and we'll have this step by step instructions. We'll have this town hall meeting. Everything will be available to you. Uh, you will have the ability to create and submit electronic responses to solicitations. It will be a little bit later in the month. We you know, got to build those solicitations and get them ready for the website. But currently, um, if there are any current solicitations that you're responding to right now, just use the old method because we're, we're not live yet in this. So don't forget that. Um, so you'll... Um, use our email address. Don't forget it. Reach out to us. Let us know. Uh, Max Stiles, I mentioned earlier, he's on the line with me as well. And he and I will do everything we can to help you. We have others in our office to help address any questions that may come up um, in reference to the new system. So it's time for you to ask questions. Do we have questions? We had a couple in the in the, the chat um, okay. that I, I answered, but I'll I'll read them and answer them as I typed the answers to them. So Thank we you. had a question. Can we have multiple supplier IDs? For example, we have several divisions in our office, one for service and one for construction. Um, so the answer is a uh, supplier can have multiple user IDs and each user would need to register separately or have someone who's in charge of maintaining the company's profile at U of SC to um, add contacts to the supplier's profile in our database. But just to remember that a supplier is a company that has already done business with the university, while a, an offerer is someone who is a prospective supplier and would become a supplier if they are to be awarded a contract as a result of a solicitation. Um, so we, you know, we want to make that distinction for, for those new offerers that have not ever become a supplier. But the, the answer to the basic question is that multiple users can have access to um, a, a company's uh, profile. Right. So, so that's um, something to keep in mind that multiple people can uh, be responsible for submitting offers to these solicitations. But at the end of the, the process, if you become a supplier, then you all share that same um, profile in the supplier database. Right. And then the, uh, the another question we had was once registered, we'll a supplier or an offer receive an automatic email to um, to notify them that a bid is submitted for a category that that they uh, offer uh, registered for, and that's correct. Whenever we post a solicitation from our purchasing office, and it goes live, any offer that has registered for any of the categories that were um, listed in that supplier offer registration, you'll get an interest notification via email. Um, that there is a new solicitation in one of the categories that you showed interest for. And so you'll be able to go in there and you'll see it in the. Um, at least the public. Uh, tab in that um, solicitation opportunities tab. And if we happen to know that you are someone that we want to go ahead and invite, it might be in the invitation um, portion as well. So you get an interest notification, but then you can take action from that either on your own or as a result of a direct invitation to that solicitation opportunity. Very good, thank you. Um, and we do have one more question that just I came see in. It. Yep. Um, would your, the question is, would our supplier number be listed on a recent USC PO? The answer is yes. So where your address is on the left hand side, it's listed right underneath that. So you will see your supplier number there. Great question. And um, I saw just a little comment about the online platform. So yes, we are very excited too. Other questions, there, there have to be more. So don't be afraid to, um, to reach out to us. We, we would be happy to uh, answer anything that we can. As I mentioned earlier, there's a few of us, uh, you know, that can respond to you uh, through our purchasing at sc.edu mailbox. On Monday, you will be live and you can start registering if you've never been a U of SC supplier. If there's nothing else, I just want to say thank you. We're really excited. We think you'll um, find this fairly um, 
easy to use and uh, we think it's user friendly. So we hope you find it that way for yourself. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Thank you.